Hi there, my name is Logan Plays, and in this tutorial, I'm going to get you guys up to speed with everything you need to know on Star Citizen 315. From getting into your ship to learning about the new inventory mechanics and medical gameplay, interacting with the world, buying things, all the way to completing your first mission. This video will give you all the basics so you can enter the game armed with the information you need to be successful. Though the game is not complete, there's plenty of stuff to do, including mining, trading, bounty hunting, cargo delivery. There's mercenary work against players or NPCs on the ground or in space, fully physicalized inventory and loot mechanics, as well as medical gameplay. These last three, new in 315. With all that said and done, let's get an account made. First, head to robertspaceindustries.com. Click account, then a list now. Fill out the relevant information, and if you like, Please use my referral code. After this, you'll be set up with an account, and it's time to head to the pledge store to access the game. Though there are a myriad of really awesome and beautiful ships that are available in the pledge store, genuinely and honestly, if you just want to get into the game in the easiest and lowest cost, I'd strongly suggest going for the Aurora. This is because the Aurora is a useful jack of all trades ship, and every other ship in the game can be earned via in game cash, so there's really no reason to go any more than the $45. After you've bought your package, click the big play now button and then download the installer. System specs for Star Citizen do vary, but the rule of thumb is at least 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, at least a relatively modern i7 or equivalent processor, and it absolutely must be on an SSD. The GPU depends, but a GTX 900 series or equivalent is probably the minimum I'd recommend. Once you've started up the game, you'll be greeted with the main menu and three distinct options. These options are Arena Commander, which is flight practice, Star Marine, which is FPS shooter practice, and finally Persistent Universe. This is the one you probably want. Hit Persistent Universe, and the first time you start the game, you'll be greeted with the character creation. You can spend as long or as little as you want here, but once you're done, click OK. There are four distinct locations to choose from in the Stanton system. Those are Orison on the planet Crusader, Lawville on the planet Hurston, Area 18 on the planet Arcorp, and finally New Babbage on the planet Microtech. Each of these offer advantages and disadvantages, but to make things super simple, as a new player I'd recommend New Babbage as it is an easy to navigate location and has all the services you'll need. This selection can only be made once, so be mindful of where you choose. After this, you'll log in wherever you logged out. At the bottom, there's regional server selection if you wish to use it, and then click set as primary residence to launch into the persistent universe. The first thing to know once you've awoken in game is how to interact with the environment. Star Citizen uses the F key held down and left mouse click to interact with the vast majority of items. As soon as you're up, you'll notice you're walking quite slowly. Use the mouse wheel, scroll forward or backwards to increase or decrease your walking speed and then hold left shift to sprint. Interacting with panels or multifunction displays can be a bit tricky. If you hold F and middle mouse button, it'll hold the camera steady and let you scroll up and down menus with the mouse wheel. It should be noted that holding F and using the mouse wheel scroll can let you zoom in and out of things as well, like the signs in and around various stations. Let's take the opportunity to talk about the basic movements and controls of the game. While I'm sure a ton of you have played a modern game before, I'm going to break it right down to basics and build it up from there. So movement is WASD while using the mouse to change direction. We've learned about how to move faster and slower and how to interact with things already. To crouch, it's control and to prone, it's X. To jump, you use the space bar and honestly, that's it for basic movement. There are some other really useful controls that you should probably know at this point, so we're going to go through a few of those now. F1 will bring up the Moby Glass home screen. This is the main portal to access all sorts of apps and data that will let you interact with the world. We'll go through this in a bit more detail later. F2 will bring up the system map information. F4 will put your camera into third person mode. F11 will bring up the social menu and F12 will hide or show the chat window. T will operate the torch and I will bring up the inventory. We'll go through this later as well. You can also white pot your helmet of condensation or snow build up with Alt and X. So let's talk a little bit more detail about Moby Glass and what that actually entails. So Moby Glass is a main menu, so to speak. It allows you to access various pieces of information that help you out in the SC universe. So first up, the main menu here shows you all sorts of just useful uh, at a glance data, like your money, crime stat, vitals, etc. Along the bottom here on the left hand side, there are several applications you can use and select and we're going to go through each of those just very briefly now. Comlink is going to be the uh, hub of all things communication. It's going to allow you to access your friends list, any of the global chat, the local chat, as well as access or disable voice comms. 
vehicle loadup manager will allow you to change the various componentry inside of your ship and also how it looks visually with the paints. Knitnack is a brand new app that basically allows you to track where everything is in the verse. So if you've left a gun on one place and you don't know where it is and you've traveled to another, you can find it here. Skyline, otherwise the map, is the map of this stand system as a whole. And this will also allow you to look at uh, travel beacons and various locations on the planet's surface. It's a little rudimentary right now, so hopefully it'll get improved soon. MO Trader allows you to trade money between players. The Contracts Manager is where you can find and receive contracts for various jobs in the verse. One well, of the primary ways of making money in the verse is via this manager. Vehicle Maintenance Services is there to allow you to repair, restock and refuel your ships at any station when you're landed on a pad. The journal gives you various tidbits of information and lore bits in and around the standard system. And finally, Delphi, which is a tracker of all of your reputation between various actions and groups in and around Stanton. With the basics out of the way, let's get ourselves geared up. First, head to the lobby of your starting zone via the elevator. Head out through the lobby and you'll see two distinct routes. One will lead down to the metro loop and the other to the hospital. In the event of death or serious injury, this is where you'll respawn and also where you can grab medical gear. For now though, let's head down left, down the stairs, using the science navigate, and we'd like to go to the commons. Once arrived at the commons, we want to head towards New Babbage Plaza, as this has all the gear we need. Firstly, make a stop at Shubin Interstellar. They're going to take care of all of our armor needs. An understood and helmet at minimum is key so that you can go anywhere that might have a lack of oxygen. Next, head across the center mass and grab a weapon of your choice, as well as any attachments you might want. Do keep an eye on your cash though. Now, to access the gear we bought. The inventory system has been revamped for Alpha 315, and as such, has a few elements we'll go through in more detail. First thing to note, that it is fully physicalized. This means you have a maximum limit of items you can carry on your person. This also means that an object left on the location that is not on your person will stay at that location. Additionally, if you die, you'll lose all the gear on your person, and it can be looted. Please do bear this in mind. With all this said and done, you can access your inventory via F plus right mouse button or I. Once inside your inventory, you'll have a couple of options depending on where you are. If you're in a city or at a station, you'll have access to the area's local inventory. If you're on a starship, You'll also have access to the Starship's inventory as well as your own personal inventory. Drag and drop items or double click them to equip them until you're all geared up. Backpacks are advised in 315 onwards as it expands your personal inventory considerably. Once equipped, it's time to head to the spaceport and find our ship. Just follow the signs back to Metro Line and take the line marked Spaceport. Once off the train, follow the corridors down to the elevator and select NBIS Terminal. Go through the scan and up the stairs. Take a left and then a right into the area signposted as hangars. Getting into your ship is a fairly easy process and starts with the ship terminal or ASOP terminals. Just walk up to one, select your ship and then click retrieve. If your ship is destroyed or not at the spaceport you're currently at, you can click claim to reclaim your ship and have it delivered to you. The console will show you where your ship has been spawned as well as on the HUD in case you forget. Once in the hangar, approach your starship and find the entry door or ladder depending on the ship. As a rule of thumb, single seat ships generally enter from the left. Once you're inside your ship, locate the flight seat wherever that might be and sit yourself down. To start the ship and get it into a flight ready status, press R. Alternatively, you can spend the time looking for the various switches in the cockpit. Next, you'll want to request permission to depart. Press F1, select Comlink, then Friends, and finally the appropriate Spaceport ATC. Wait for them to confirm your request and then close your Moby Glass with F1. The hangar doors or roof will open up and you'll be able to depart. Please, be gentle though, this is where a lot of people end their first flight. Basic flight controls are the following. Space to go up and control to go down, W to accelerate, and S to decelerate or reverse, A to strafe left, and D to strafe right. Q will roll left, and E will roll right. Shift engages the boost, and X engages the space brake. It's very, very handy. Slowly exit the hangar and fly away from the spaceport, as obstructing a hangar bay or ramming into someone else can be considered a criminal offense. Once you're outside, we can continue with the rest of the controls. N will operate the landing gear, and L will turn on or off the ship's external lights. Press and hold U to power down the entire ship, and I to just power down the engines. Press and hold Y to exit out the flight seat, and actually any seat you're in, and use mouse control to pitch and yaw. Take some time to get to grips with your ship. There should be noted that ships have inertia. They're all different weights and sizes, so it's really good to get a handle of how big and heavy you are, and how long it takes you to slow down. 
C will engage the cruise control. The ship will attempt to maintain the set speed as indicated by a little marker to the left of the speed gauge. The speed can be controlled with the mouse wheel as indicated by the little square moving up and down next to the speed gauge. When your speed marker is in the red section, you are above SCM or standard combat maneuvering speed for that ship. Your ship will take longer to slow down at this point and will be much less responsive to turning. If your ship has a VTOL thruster, you can toggle this with K. Please note, as well as the inertia and weight of a ship, atmospheric drag has an effect too, so the ship will handle differently in atmosphere and in space. Once you're a bit more comfortable with your ship, it's time to select your first mission. Currently speaking, missions are divided into two categories. General missions are lawful, missions not incurring any crime stats, whereas personal missions tend to be a little bit more unlawful and run a moderate risk of crime stats. Depending on the mission, it pays to be prepared for the right gear and ships to complete it successfully. Delivery, search, and maintenance missions will generally require a ship to have a bit of cargo space. Delivery boxes can be put on the floor and need to be taken to a drop-off location. Search missions will take you to derelict ships with the aim to recover valuable goods return them to a preset location within a limited amount of time or other limiting parameters. Service beacons will help you either transporting a player or providing medical support to revive an incapacitated player, whereas ECN alerts will want you to provide combat support to NPCs. Investigation and retrieval missions will have players delving into caves or starship wreckages to locate a dead NPC or black box. These can either be in space or on the ground. Bounty hunting requires that you first pass a certification test called the Tracker Training Permit Certification. that will cost around 500 UEC. There are several tiers of certifications to achieve that will let you hunt more and more dangerous targets or greater rewards. Nursery missions are all about combat. Illegal surveillance missions will require you scan, locate, and destroy illegal probes. Security contractor evaluation missions will allow you to engage in the bunker assault style mission, which will have you assault a fortified bunker and assist a local force of friendly NPCs against pirates. There's also boarding action in progress, which is a large ship under attack by pirates, and it's up to you to intercept and stop this. Delivery missions are a great place to start and get used to flying around and make some cash really simply. And bounty hunting missions are a fantastic place to start learning about combat and really dialing in those flight skills. Once you've accepted your mission, check the location and distances. Some missions will, will be unachievable in your starter ship, especially if the UEC reward is quite high. The higher the reward, the more difficult the mission generally is, or will require better hardware. You can see any accepted missions and change the tracked one under the accepted tab. With your mission selected, you'll see a distance that is quite large, and as such, you'll need to use the quantum jump to reach the destination in a reasonable amount of time. The first thing to do is to plot a course. You can do this via F1 to open your mobile glass and then click Skyline. Alternatively, you can use F2 to instantly open Skyline. Double click to zoom in and double right click to zoom out. Also, use the mouse wheel to zoom in or out for more control. Use the left click to pan and the right click to tumble the map around. Find the mission marker and select it, and you'll see a green dashed line appear. This is the proposed route, and once you're happy with it, select Set Route, and that line will turn a solid green. Once this is done, close the mobile glass, and your ship radar will have a green line on it showing the destination and route. To quantum, you'll need to be above a certain altitude, which differs from planet to planet, to head up and out of the planet's atmosphere. Press B to spool the quantum drive and align the marker to the destination. Once this is done, the quantum drive will charge up and will calculate the destination. Once both of these are completed, hold B to initiate the jump. Bear in mind, depending on the distance in the fuel tank of your ship, you might have to make multiple jumps and stop for fuel. If you don't have enough fuel, the route will show up as red. Additionally, if you press B without a destination, multiple nav points will show up as potential destinations for you to go to. Also, as you travel, you may encounter security forces. If they ask you to stop, stop. Failure to do so will result in a crime and potential fines. Pirates may also try to attack you. You can either engage them if you feel you can beat them or depart as quickly as you can. Once you arrive on site, your ship's passive scans will locate any nearby ships and enemies and show these on your HUD and radar. Pressing T whilst the reticule is over a target will allow you to target it. With nothing highlighted, it will select through potential targets. Left Alt and T will unlock your target. To fire your primary weapon group, use left mouse click, and to fire your secondary group, it's right click. To aim accurately, you want to put your reticule over the predicted aim marker, which will look like a small circle. The circle expands and becomes green when you're in range and predicted to hit. Alternatively, you can hit G to cycle between aiming modes from locked to gimbaled, if it's all in the ship, and finally tracking and firing directly at the cursor. Bear in mind that energy weapons will deplete the capacitors and will need time to recharge from your volleys, and ballistic weapons have very, very limited ammo, and so should be used very sparingly. Missiles can be fired via the middle mouse button to enter into missile operator mode. Align the reticle to the target and await the red circle to shine green. Once green, left click to fire a missile. Press G to prepare more than one missile, or at maximum, and use right click to cycle through missiles where applicable. To counter a missile, use H to fire flares and J to fire chaff. Different missiles have different levels of tracking, so you may have to use more than one countermeasure to shape the lock. You can shunt power around various systems to boost them in combat with the following hotkeys. F5 increases power to weapons, F6 for engines, and F7 for shields. 
and F8 to return them back to balance mode. Bear in mind this takes power from other systems and so will reduce the effectiveness of other parts of the ship. Finally, during combat I recommend varying direction and speed, but aim to engage at or just under the red SEM speed and between 1000 to 2000 meters, as this is the normal effective range of most weapons. Bear in mind, however, that missiles do have a minimum arming range and a maximum range. In Star Citizen, some missions will require you to locate objects not shown up on your passive radar by pinging and scanning actively. You can send out a pulse with tab that will ping targets and areas of interest. Then you can enter into scanning mode via V. In this mode, left click starts an active scan that gives you much more detail about the target. The mouse wheel will increase or decrease the scanning zone focus. Sometimes the mission will require you to engage in person and as such you'll need to leave your ship. Once at your mission location, leave the ship and enter where you need to do so. If this is in space, you'll enter EVA mode. Once you've exited the ship, the controls are identical to when you're flying. When returning to an area with gravity, such as the interior of a ship, it pays to go slow. Aim your feet with the direction of the gravitational pull and not too high so that you'll hurt your legs. This way you'll be pulled down onto your feet and not fall over. If you play any FPS games from here, things will feel very familiar and comfortable. One, draws your sidearm. Two, your primary weapon. If you have two primary weapons on, you can cycle between these by pressing two again. And three, your heavy weapon. Four, will draw your utility item out. In this case, either a multi-tool or a medical gun. Zero, will put you into melee mode. The middle mouse button will perform takedowns when applicable. Press R to reload and hold R to holster your weapon. C will get out your medical pen if it's equipped, and using left click will apply it to yourself. Right click will apply it to someone else. Sometimes things just don't go your way and you'll end up losing your life in the verse. If this happens, you're all spawn at your default spawn location. This will be where you set your home, or at the hospital or clinic you changed your respawn point to. You can change your respawn point by visiting the facility in question and interacting with the registration terminal there. If this was aboard an 890 jump or a Carrack and the ship is destroyed, you'll be returned to your default location. Sometimes, however, you may not be outright killed and instead be incapacitated but be able to be revived. In this down state, you can rely on the help of other players to come and assist you. If you're in a party, one of your teammates can help get you up. Alternatively, if you're playing solo, you can hold M to send a help beacon and offer a reward for assistance. However, if no help is coming or you're prepared to lose the gear on your character, you can press and hold backspace to respawn instantly. To assist and revive players, the best piece of gear is a paramed medical gun that can be bought at any medical facility and its medical gun refill. This will allow you to revive other players if injured by pointing the gun at them, or yourself by pressing B to turn the gun on yourself. A medical gun can temporarily cure any injury until you have enough time to get to a hospital and receive proper treatment. Body parts have localized damage, and taking more damage to a body part increases the tier of injury as well as reducing the functionality of that part. For example, breaking your leg will mean you can no longer walk. Lastly, be aware of your blood drug level as using too many drugs at once will cause you to become intoxicated and eventually pass out. In Star Citizen, several factors outside of combat contribute to your health and survival. Extremes of temperature, food and water are all variables that are required to keep you healthy. In extreme environments, you'll receive a warning and a countdown to your eventual death. This can be extended and prevented by equipping specialist gear such as the Pembroke Heavy Environmental Suit, and shops will have temperature ratings to show the environment that they work in. Food and water can be bought at almost any spaceport and city with multiple food vendors. Simply buy the food and drink you want and store it on your character. With the inventory open, take off your helmet, and then click on the food or drink you want to consume. Please don't forget to put your helmet back on afterwards though. If your ship is lost or destroyed in combat during a mission, you can recover the ship via the ASOP terminal or the ship spawn terminal. Do be aware that if you recover the ship, it will reset it back to default, so any upgrades and items on board will be lost. If your ship is damaged or if you've completed a mission, you can always land at any major city, spaceport, and at the Lagrange points. Though be aware not all Lagrange points have space stations. Bear in mind that a crime stat of two or higher will make you hostile in the eyes of space station security services, and as such, turret defense systems will open up on site. Once within 10 kilometers of the station or destination, open up up your mobile glass and request permission to land just like you did when you took off. A circle with an arrow will appear on your HUD marking your landing pad. Slowly come into land and toggle your landing gear down to land manually. Alternatively, if you're really close to the landing pad, you can press and hold N once your landing gear is down to auto land. When you're on the ground, open your mobile glass and click the vehicle maintenance service tab to repair, rearm and refuel your ship. If you find you want to give your ship a little extra kick or maybe adjust some of its settings, upgrades can always be bought from the following locations. Center Mass, Dumpers Depot and Platinum Bay are all around the system as well as Omega Pro and New Babbage and Cousin Crows and Orison. You can access and change components via the Vehicle Loadout Manager Mobile Glass app. Make sure you do these changes before you spawn the ship for them to show up. Please note that your ship must be stored at the current location to be customized. Additionally, you can buy new ships from New Deal in Lawville, Hurston, Astro Armada at Area 18, Arc Corp, and the Crusader Showroom at Orison. 
and wrench ships via a myriad of terminals around the various spaceports. Generally, I like to suggest that players aim for the vulnerable event of Titan as their first upgrade path as this ship allows a lot more access to greater variety of missions, better upgrades, and it allows you to really spread your wings there and try things out. It should be noted that you'll keep all ships and items purchased in game until our major wipe occurs. These aren't that common and there are many months between wipes the last one was almost 18 months ago however all gear and ships bought with real money from the pledge store will stay on your account between wipes from here on in you'll be armed with all the basic information to get out there and start experiencing the verse in all of its glory try new missions play with new gear and try and meet up with a couple of buddies as playing in a group is really the best experience if you wanted a couple of suggestions i'd advise trying out mining or perhaps trading as a place to look at and if you ever have any questions I'm personally available during live streams six days a week and via my Discord server. Link in the channel description. Thank you so much for watching this. This is my first major video and I hope it's helped you out. If you have any comments, good or bad, I'd love to read them. If this has been a helpful video to you, then please do like and maybe subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you out there in the verse.